Hello everyone. My name is Rajan and welcome to my another video about what is .NET 6. Did you know that with .NET 6 you can now target multiple platforms from the same code base, a concept known as write once, run anywhere. In this video, I will give you a high level overview of what's included in .NET 6 and why you should use it. But before proceeding further, if you are interested in staying up to date with the latest developments in the world of technology, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be sharing videos on a variety of topics including new developer technologies, programming tips and tricks and much more. So hit the subscribe button and join me on this journey of learning and discovery. Thank you. Some of the major topics that I will cover include a summary of the history of .NET from its beginning to .NET 6, which completes the platform unification that Microsoft began a few years ago. Following that, I will go over some key points to help you decide whether or not to upgrade to .NET 6. I will cover what the .NET ecosystem includes and I will give you an overview of the types of applications that you can build with .NET 6. By the end of this video, you will understand what .NET 6 is, what's new and what's important and you will be able to decide whether or not to adopt .NET 6. Before proceeding further, you should have a basic understanding of programming and a general understanding of dotnet though this is not required from here you should feel confident diving into more technical dotnet courses so let's get started with the video why dotnet 6 are you a highly experienced developer who is curious about what dotnet 6 has to offer or are you a newer dotnet developer maybe you start with dotnet core or xamarin and are curious about dotnet 6 or maybe you are a technical decision maker a non developer role like a pm or an executive who wants to understand the big picture of dotnet 6 regardless of who you are you are well aware that developing application is something that occurs on a regular basis there are millions of developers working on applications all over the world but when i say applications it means a lot more than it used to web applications embedded applications accounting applications scientific applications saas applications cloud applications and other types are also available each of these applications requires a unique set of tools as well as a unique set of skills typically developer learn a specific development path based on the type of applications they want to create such as c or c++ for unix or console applications C# Sharp or Visual Basic .NET for Windows application, ASP .NET, JavaScript or PHP for web development, Java, Python or Objective C for mobile applications, C++ for gaming and so on. There is no longer the case thanks to .NET 6. .NET 6 is a free cross-platform open source developer platform that includes many languages, editors, libraries and tools for creating web, mobile, desktop, games, machine learning IoT and other applications even better .net is designed to be a general purpose which means that once a developer learns how to build one type of application all of these skills can be applied to create another type of applications while using the same languages and libraries making .net developers more productive and efficient it's no surprise that businesses from all over the world rely on .net to solve their business problems stack overflow for example is built on .net There are some restaurants, search engines, products and services that .NET developers may be familiar with. Companies that move you and your belongings and more. The list is extensive and I am sure there are thousands more applications that are essential to our world that aren't included here. .NET works for them and it works for you as well. How did we get here? You can use .NET to create a wide range of applications and there are numerous reasons why using .NET 6 making sense. But first, let me step back and tell you how we got here. So, you can understand the significance of the .NET 6 release. Microsoft announced the .NET framework in June 2000, releasing its first version in early 2002. one framework to build applications using different languages like c sharp and vb.net with an intermediate language just in time compilation with a common api interoperability with the os and many other features for windows application 
Later that year, Microsoft released the .NET Compact Framework, which was a subset of the full .NET Framework aimed to develop applications that run on mobile and embedded devices. But it had a different code base from the .NET Framework. 2004 saw the release of Mono to run .NET applications on Linux. Although Microsoft did not create Mono, it was an open source effort. In 2007, the .NET Micro Framework was released, designed to run on resources constraint devices. Silverlight was also released that year, providing a framework to build rich internet application similar to Flash. Then Xamarin in 2011, which has its roots in Mono, for building Android and iOS apps with .NET and C Sharp. Xamarin was acquired by Microsoft later on. Then in 2014, Microsoft started to create an actual cross-platform development framework which was then released in 2016 as .NET Core, aiming to be the cross-platform successor to the .NET framework. Do you see where I am going with this? Throughout the years, there has been a rapid increase of frameworks. It felt like a new framework related to .NET was created for each different need making developing between platforms quite challenging. This meant that to develop different types of application, it was necessary to use one of the different flavors of .NET. This is where .NET standards comes in, which is the specification that defines the set of APIs that all .NET implementation must provide. It addresses the code sharing problem for .NET developers across all platforms by bringing APIs across different environments. As newer version of .NET standard was released, more common APIs were available. You developed against the standard and your app would be able to run in the different platforms that support the standard. This went until version 2.1. Although Microsoft won't be releasing a new version of .NET standard. Why? Because of .NET 6. .NET 6 is now available. .NET 6 completes the process of unification, a single full stack development framework that can be used to create various types of applications. It is a cross-platform targeting windows, multiple Linux distributions, macOS, Android, iOS, and tvOS with support for x86, x64, ARM32, and ARM64 architectures, which is one of the primary reasons why you should use .NET. But wait, there is some more. The base class libraries or BCL allows you to create apps for this supported platforms with the same code, languages and tools. In terms of performance, many benchmarks shows that .NET 6 is faster than previous versions as well as other popular frameworks. It is also lighter in weight with fewer packages included in its core, but you can still get those packages you require from NuGet or other repository. Dependency injection, which is now included, is extremely beneficial for MVC views. Hosting .NET 6 web apps can be hosted on a variety of web servers other than IIS. You can now use other server software such as Apache or Docker. .NET is a fully open source framework, which means it is free and the code is available in GitHub in case you want to review, contribute or learn about how it works. Over 1 lakh contributions from individuals and more than 3700 companies. Testability You can use unit test projects to check your applications. Grant that this is not new or revolutionary, but .NET makes unit testing easy. Modern and innovative ASP.NET Core is designed to allow runtime components, API, compiler, and language to evolve quickly while still providing a stable and supportive platform to keep your apps running. And there is even more. But at a high level, those are the highlights. Before moving forward, it is time for a .NET fun fact. .NET is free and open source using MIT and Apache 2 licenses. It is a project managed by the .NET Foundation. The open source announcement took place in November 2014. But .NET in general is something that Microsoft has been working on since the late 90s. It is not like one developer started it and just released it. So the question is, who should be credited with the first bulk check-in? Many engineers have worked in .NET, so here's what Microsoft did. They created the .NET bot about a month before the announcement and then the .NET bot made the first commit. Pretty nice way to kick off a new era of .NET. Should I move to .NET 6? 
.NET 5 was the major release of .NET right after .NET Core 3.1. Microsoft named this new release .NET 5 instead of .NET Core 4 because of two reasons. They skipped version numbers 4.x to avoid the confusion with the .NET frameworks for .x. They dropped Core from the name to emphasize that it is the main implementation of .NET going forward. The only exception is with ASP.NET which remained ASP.NET Core to avoid confusion. .NET 5 and also .NET 6 supports more types of applications and more platform than .NET Core or the .NET framework. From now on it's just .NET and Divergent 6 being the one that I am currently covering. Currently, Microsoft is putting all of its efforts in .NET. However, the .NET framework is still supported, which makes you wonder, do I need to move all of my development efforts to .NET 6? While I want to say yes. There are a few considerations to take the .NET frameworks is a good option. If you are maintaining an existing 4.8 or earlier .NET application, especially if it is a large code base your application relies on, some functionality likes an API or library that is not available in .NET 6. A specific technology or framework is not available in .NET 6. For example, WebForms, the current version of .NET framework 4.8 is the latest of the .NET framework. There are no more future versions planned, but on the bright side, it is still supported for years to come. In fact, at this time, there is not often even an end of support date for 4.8. On the other hand, Microsoft encourages you to start using or migrate to .NET 6. If you are building a new application and have a choice between .NET and the .NET framework, then .NET 6 is the way to go. You are building a cross-platform application targeting microservices or using Docker containers, you need high performance and scalable systems. In summary, for any new development pick, .NET 6 if you want to migrate an existing .NET framework on even .NET Core applications to .NET 6. Bear in mind that this process requires some work regarding the release schedule for a long time .NET did not have a very predictable release schedule. Now a new major version of .NET will be released every year, but their support lifecycle will vary. For example, .NET 6 was released in November 2021. It will be supported for 3 years. It is an LTS or long-term release. .NET 7 on the other hand will receive a shorter support lifecycle as it is not treated as LTS. It is called a current release which is only supported for 6 more months after the next major version is released. It is up to you to decide on which version you want to be. One option is to always be on the latest release. On the other hand, you can also go for LTS version to LTS version which gives you enough time to plan ahead with this in mind. Please join me in the topic to tell you what makes up the .NET ecosystem. Before we go any further, you should know what version of .NET this course applies to. This course was created using the .NET version that you see here. All the information in this course applies completely to this .NET version and that means that everything I tell you in this course might be slightly different for earlier versions of .NET most concepts will still apply, but I cannot guarantee that they will be exactly correct for earlier versions. The .NET 6 Ecosystem The .NET Unified Platform Previously, I described how .NET evolved from multiple platform to a single .NET platform, a single unified platform for developing various types of applications with the same code base tools and libraries all with vast performance improvements. This fulfills one of the Microsoft long-held ambition of allowing developers to write code once and run it everywhere. There is no more framework or core or using Xamarin by itself. It is simple .NET. And this is the secret source of .NET. Well, maybe not secret because it is an open source. But what makes it all possible is layered. .NET architecture which allows you to write your code using one of the available .NET languages, leveraging a vast set of functionality including in the .NET standard libraries. The point being that .NET 6 provides its API surface as an obstruction layer. That is, when we create an application, we mostly do not need to code against a particular operating system. Instead, we use the functionality from the common base libraries as well as any other libraries that you create 
or obtain then your code gets compiled into an intermediate language that gets translated and executed in one of the available runtimes that is specific to your target platform all this allows you to create cloud applications in azure websites using razor pages asp.net mvc or blazor desktop development with maui wpf and windows form mobile apps using xamarin and more importantly maui gaming with unity internet of things that's iot for both arm32 and arm64 architecture and ai using ml.net or .net for apache spark best of all the process is the same regardless of the type of application or target platform let me walk you through the overview by explaining what's available in the .NET 6 ecosystem which includes .NET programming languages standard and base class libraries IDEs and the CLI compilers intermediate languages SDKs and runtimes project systems and MS builds and finally building and deploying applications I will now spend a few minutes explaining and expanding on each of these topics beginning at the top and going down programming languages in .NET One of the first decision you must make when developing an application is which programming language to use .NET support a variety of programming languages some are created by Microsoft while others are not some are more commonly used than others but what matter is that you speak the language that you know and are comfortable with i did like to mention the main programming language used for developing dotnet applications are visual basic f sharp and c sharp first there is visual basic also known as visual basic dotnet or vb dotnet it is usually the simplest language to learn vb6 the founding language was in use when dotnet was released it all originated from basic which was developed in 1960s although the language is stable no new features are actively being developed believe me there are still many applications out there that are written in visual basic next f sharp which is great for dealing with problems that can be solved efficiently with functional programming such as calculation engines analytics services building minimal web apis performing data manipulations interactive programming and so on it combines the syntax and power of a functional language with thousands of dotnet library functions finally c sharp a modern object oriented and type safe programming language is widely regarded as the most popular dotnet development language c sharp is based on the c programming language family and will be immediate familiar to c c++ java and java c programmers it was built specially for dotnet c sharp 10 was released in parallel with dotnet 6 it is vastly improved over previous versions at a high level the capabilities of each one of the language was very but most of these dotnet languages provide type safety type interface generic types delegates lambdas events exceptions attributes asynchronous codes parallel programming and code analyzers to name a few the three languages are interoperable which means they are compatible and can coexist in a single application which is one of the key features of dotnet allowing you to reuse your skills code and favorite libraries in a familiar environment you can create apps faster and at lower cost indeed as long as the language can generate an intermediate language or iel you can write your own language that runs in dotnet and interact with other language i will explain iel shortly as now i will cover what you need to create and run dotnet application the standard and the base class libraries when developing your application you can create your own libraries use someone's else libraries or use those included with dotnet this dotnet libraries provide the functionality required to develop applications for either of the target platforms i am referring to the functionalities under system dot star and microsoft dot star or at least the majority of it consider them the batteries included part of dotnet they are referred to as base class libraries for the core set of framework classes libraries for the entire set you can use dotnet's api browser to look for the functionality you require consider new json functionality from system.tax.json and that's just one of the libraries available there are many more 
the standard libraries allows you to use the same API for all platforms. Well, almost not all platforms have the same functionality. For example, Windows has the Windows registry, but Linux does not have. Linux uses security in one way that is different from Windows. Thus, while your code can access all the available APIs, there may be cases where a particular functionality is not available in one of the target platforms. When this happens, you will get a platform not supported exception. I am not going to get into technical details, but when you are developing a cross platform application, you may need to review it if a particular API is supported or not. For which .NET provides the supported OS platform attribute. The unsupported OS platform attribute or if an API does not have an attribute, it is supported everywhere. Furthermore, .NET 6 has a code analyzer rule CA1416 that checks if an API has this attribute. This helps cross-platform development, but it is a bit technical. This will assist your development efforts. Furthermore, one of the improvements in .NET is the removal of several .NET libraries that are not frequently used in order to make .NET lighter weight. However, you can still get these libraries using NuGet. If you are not familiar with NuGet, it is an open source package manager for .NET. A NuGet package is simply a zip file containing that the NUPKG extension contains compiled code in the form of DLLs, other files related to that code, and a descriptive manifest containing information such as the package version number. Any developer can create and publish their own packages to NuGet.org, and these packages can be used by other applications. IDEs and the CLI Now that you have decided on a language and know which libraries and APIs you can use, Let's talk about where you can write your application, named an IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment. There are many IDEs available that you can use to create your applications either from Microsoft Open Source or from third parties. The options that I want to mention are Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and the GitHub Code Spaces. First, there is Visual Studio, which many developers around the world, include myself, have been using to code. It comes with a lot of built-in functionality for you and your team to work with .NET. Visual Studio allows you to code, build, debug, deploy, collaborate, analyze, and learn. There is a Windows version as well as Mac version. Student, open source contributors, and individuals can use the community editions for free. Then, there are business and enterprise license version that you can purchase. It is determined by your requirements. Then, there is Visual Studio Code. It is a member of the Visual Studio family. Visual Studio Code or VS Code for short is available for Windows, Mac OS and Linux. It is open source and free. There are extensions for working with .NET languages available. It is indeed refined code editing. One of the main advantage of VS Code is that it provides a consistent coding experience regardless of your operating system. Even better, a web version is available. Check it out. This appears to be VS Code. However, because it runs on the web, it is simple to modify code with a browser. Next is GitHub Code Spaces, which is a development environment but host on the cloud. It is a VS code but backed by the high performance VMs that starts in second. To use GitHub Code Spaces, you can simply type a dot when you are in GitHub in a code file and it opens the editor. Personal accounts are not built for code spaces, but team and enterprise accounts are built. So, Take this into account. Additionally, .NET contains multiple command line interfaces tools, that's the CLI, so that you can develop, build, run, test, and execute .NET applications. Compilers Intermediate Language SDK and Runtimes One of the main advantages of .NET is that it is cross-platform. Let me tell you how this is achieved. Higher level, .NET language like c -sharp or Visual Basic compile code to a hardware agnostic instruction set, which is called Intermediate Language or IL. They are called Managed Languages. Managed code meaning that the execution is managed by a runtime. This is not new. It has been like this since the release on the .NET framework in 2002. But now, .NET takes this to the whole new level. Let me show you some IL. As a quick demo, this is the IL for one of my application. 
When I compile my code in Visual Studio, the executable or library that gets generated will contain these instructions. I am using a tool called ILDASAM or the ILDIS assembler to view the intermediate language. This code can then be executed in the .NET runtime and this is how my application runs. To run your application or get started developing it, you need to either get a runtime or the .NET SDK. The .NET runtime actually, it is called the common language runtime or CLR, is where the application runs, well, where the IL is executed. It can be in a Windows machine or a Linux or a Mac. The CLR has a slightly different name depending on the target platform. Core CLR is the classic CLR for Windows while the Linux and Mac is the mono CLR. The CLR basically serves as an obstruction layer that uses core effects to call into the operating system and perform all necessary tasks. The runtime provides a type system, assembly loading, a garbage collector, native interop and other basic services. You can install the runtime in the machine where your application will run or you can install the .NET SDK in your development machine which comes with the necessary runtimes. Thus, CLR not only executes code, it also is in charge of compiling it just using a just-in-time or JIT compiler which I will cover in just a moment. The .NET SDK contains everything you need to develop or run applications including a set of libraries and tool as well as the runtimes. The following components are included when you download and install the .NET SDK. First, the .NET CLI which includes command line tools that you can use for your local development and continuous integration scripts. Then the .NET driver which is a CLI command that runs framework dependent apps. Next, the Roslyn and f -sharp programming language compilers. Also, the MS Build engine which is the platform used by .NET to build application. The .NET runtime which provides the type system, assembly loading, a garbage collector, native interop and other services. The runtime libraries which provide primitive data types and fundamental utilities. Here is the BCL or the base class library come into play. The ASP.NET Core runtime which provides basic services for internet connected apps such as web apps, IoT apps and mobile backends. The desktop runtime which provides basic services for Windows desktop application including Windows Form and WPF and more. And this is what the SDK contains. In short, the SDK is what you use to build and run your application. The runtime is to run your application. Now let's talk about compilation, the JIT or just-in-time compiler. Translates IL to machine code that can be executed in the platform of the machine where the code is being executed. The advantage is that JIT compiler is optimized for each of the available platform making it easier for developers as they do not need to optimize the application specifically for each platform. In short, this is one of the main reasons how .NET let us write once and run everywhere as each one of the target platforms has their own runtime. Building and deploying applications Coding an application is only part of the battle. There are many other things that are required besides the coding part like build, compile and then deploy. The Microsoft Build Engine MS Build is the platform used for building applications. When you build an application in Visual Studio, it uses MS Build but MS Build does not need Visual Studio which is really convenient because it allows us to decouple the build process and incorporate and automate deployments. MS Build can be used to perform builds and deployments, for example, by using it in Azure pipelines which allows you to automatically compile, test and deploy your application. Azure pipeline is a part of Azure DevOps. It is used for continuous integration as well as continuous delivery. There are other tools that you can use, for example, GitHub Actions, Cake for C Sharp and Fake for F Sharp. You can also do deployments manually. But automated deployments are less error prone and more efficient. Which takes me to my next point, the deployments model. The deployment models. .NET apps can be published in two different modes. You can publish an app as self-contained which produces an executable file that includes the .NET runtime and libraries, the application and its dependencies. Users of the applications can run it on a machine that does not have a .NET runtime installed. Self-contained applications are platform-specific 
and they can optionally be published using a form of AOT compilation. AOT being ahead of time compilation as there are some platform that requires the application to be pre-compiled for example iOS. Or you can publish an app as framework dependent which produces an executable file and binary files that's DLL files that include only the application itself and its dependencies. User of the applications have to separately install the .NET runtime. The executable file is platform specific but the DLL files of the framework dependent applications are cross platform. Additionally, you can install multiple versions of the runtime side by side to run framework dependent apps that target different versions of the runtime. Executables are produced for specific platform which you can specify with a runtime identifier known as the RID. This is what makes up the .NET ecosystem which allows us to code, build and deploy application in multiple target platforms. And now please join me in the next part to tell you about the types of applications that you can create with .NET. Developing applications with .NET 6. .NET can be used to develop a wide range of cross-platform applications. In this part, I am going to cover at a very high level that how .NET can be used to develop these kinds of applications, applications that you can create including desktop, web, mobile, cloud, AI, gaming and IoT. Let me show you. Desktop. The first type of application that I would like to mention is desktop applications which in fact is the category of applications that have been available the longest time. Desktop applications have been a thing way before even .NET was born. Desktop applications have many advantages including the fact that they typically have greater control over the operating system but there are certain disadvantages as well. For example, you typically need to install desktop applications and there are certain prerequisites that need to be met for an application to run. In .NET's case, you can need the runtime or at least have the application pre-packaged in a certain way. That's the self-contained application. In .NET 6, you can create desktop application in several different ways including WinForms, Windows Presentation Foundation which is known as WPF and Universal Windows Platform or UWP. Let me expand a little bit more on each one. First, with WinForm or Windows Form which has been available since the release of .NET. It is a UI framework with easy to use drag and drop designer for building Windows desktop applications. Yeah, this is a limitation. The fact that .NET 6 is cross-platform does not mean you can just compile and deploy a Windows Form app in a Mac. You can use a language like c -sharp or Visual Basic in the backend to create the functionality to respond to events or process information. The next option is with Windows Presentation Foundation, known as WPF, which is a UI framework for building visual compelling Windows desktop applications. It is also has a designer and in this case XAML is used to provide a declarative model for the application programming. You can also use c -sharp in the backend to create the functionality that you need. And finally, Universal Windows Platform or UWP which extends the .NET platform to enable development for any Windows device, PC, tablet, phone, Xbox, HoloLens, Surface Hub and IoT Core. UWP provides a UI framework for writing responsive apps that support several speed sizes and interaction models such as touch, mouse, keyboard, game controller and pen. Extension SDKs offer specialized APIs for each device class, for example the holographic capabilities of HoloLens. Let's see next. Web. With the invention of the internet, web applications capabilities reached a whole new level. Now you can build an application and have it instantly available worldwide. Web applications allow scaling like never before and .NET allow you to create web applications that can be installed in multiple different platforms using ASP.NET Core. By the way, the core remained to differentiate it from ASP.NET from the .NET framework which still has web forms available. Web forms are not available in .NET 6. Instead, you use Razor Pages, ASP.NET MVC or Blazor. You can build web applications and services for Windows, Linux and Mac OS. Oh, and one thing. When I say web, 
it does not mean just a web application as in the one that displays a web page there are other types of web applications that you can build for example you can develop rest apis for a range of clients including browsers and mobile devices as well as applications that enable bidirectional communication between server and the clients in real time mobile web applications change the world by increasing substantially the reach that each application can have however mobile applications take it all to the whole new level and by mobile i mean native applications as there are some mobile applications that are only a shell with a browser that loads a web application a native application is executed in the mobile devices which means that it can be faster as it runs locally in the smartphone or a tablet there are less scalability issues that with a web application as each mobile device performs its own computing also if the type of applications allows it the mobile application can run offline and it is possible to create very responsive uis it has local storage and more and now with the release of dotnet 6 one of the main highlights is the unification of the xamarin sdks into dotnet xamarin has been a part of dotnet since it was acquired by microsoft but now it is a core workload xamarin is now dotnet instead of just a set of tools that you can use it shares the same base class library as other workloads for example blazor and adopts the modern sdk style projects system for consistent tooling experience xamarin.android and xamarin.ios are now platform targets they are referred to as dotnet for android and dotnet for ios as they are dotnet binding to the native sdks from google and apple respectively with their native names in the apis mavi xamarin is great but then there is a mavi the dotnet release is a big step in microsoft because it introduces mavi the dotnet multi platform app ui which is a framework for building modern multi platform natively compiled ios android mac os and windows app using c sharp and xaml with all in a single code base mavi is basically the next iteration of xamarin dot forms it is a rebranding as well as a major upgrades the good news being that you can migrate xamarin dot forms apps to mavi microservices enterprise all over the world are recognizing the advantage of using containerized microservices including cost saving easier deployments and scalability microservices are a design pattern in which applications are composed of small independent modules that communicate with each other using well defined contracts each microservice focus on a single concept in dotnet you can create independently deployable microservices that run on docker containers microservices make it easier to develop test and deploy isolated parts of your application once deployed each microservice can be independently scaled as needed cloud the cloud changed the way in which we create applications in many ways in my opinion the most important reason being that it substantially lowered the barrier to entry to get the necessary resources for creating certain kinds of applications for example if you have an application that may require many resources now you can spin up a bunch of servers process your data use them in parallel and then shut down when you are done which reduces the cost helping your increase your processing capabilities and giving you access to resources that were not typically available for a large array of companies but more than just raw processing power and storage the cloud provides many existing services with a wide range of functionality there are many clouds but microsoft azure may be the best way to go if you are dotnet developer as it was built with dotnet developers in mind There are hundreds of Azure products that run .NET natively and are integrated with Visual Studio developer tools. You can use project templates to get started faster and you have multiple powerful debugging capabilities advantages when it comes for publishing and CI CD tools to be more productive with cloud app development, deployment and monitoring. To get started, you may want to take a look at the Azure SDK for .NET. Machine learning I hear all the time that machine learning and artificial intelligence are the future but I disagree they are not the future they are the present and while dotnet may not to be the first platform that comes to mind when you talk about developing machine learning applications I invite you to take a look at ml.net 
ML dot net is a free open source cross platform machine learning framework that's made specially for dot net developers. It is an extensible platform with tooling in Visual Studio as well as a cross platform CLI that powers recognized Microsoft features like Windows Hello, Bing Ads, PowerPoint designs, ideas and many more Microsoft products. You can develop and integrate custom machine learning models into your .NET applications without needing prior machine learning experience. Of course, it is recommended that you learn about machine learning in general, for which there are many resources available on the internet. Anyway, some of the apps that you can develop including sentiment analysis, which lets you analyze the sentiments of customer review using a binary classification algorithm. Product recommendation, which allows you to recommend products based on purchase history using a matrix factorization algorithm. Price prediction, for example, you can predict taxi fares based on parameters such as distance traveled using a regression algorithm. Customer sentiments, which can help you identify group of customers with similar profile using a clustering algorithm. Object detection, which allows you to recognize objects in an image using a deep learning model. Fraud detection, which can help you, for example, to detect fraud credit card transaction using a binary classification algorithm. Sales spike detection, which allows you, for example, to detect spikes and changes in product sales using an anonymity detection model. Image classification, which allows you to classify image, for example, broccoli versus pizza or dog or chicken. By using a TensorFlow deep learning model and sales forecasting, for example, allows you to forecast future sales for products using a regression algorithm. And these are only some of the samples of what you can do with ML.NET game development. Another type of application that you can create is games. Games has the possibility of exploding in popularity. The sky is the limit. With .NET, you can use Unity to develop 2D and 3D games for the most popular desktops, phones, and consoles. You have available with game engines, you can build games and more for PC, Mac consoles, mobile, and VR AR using cross-platform engines. As well as some game services, you can choose from the existing cloud game services like Azure Playfab or build your own on any cloud. As well as some tools you can code, debug, store and test reliability on any platform with world-class developer tools. And you have large ecosystem, you can integrate with modern backend services, native APIs, components and more. Internet of Things Internet of Things or IoT describe physical objects with sensors that have the capability to process information and store data while connected to the internet. In many cases, you may hear edge computing or other similar phrases to describe them. In .NET 6, you can create IoT apps using c -sharp that run with native support in Raspberry Pi, Hummingboard, BeagleBoard, Pine A64 and more. You can leverage the open source library and frameworks to interact with specialized hardware such as sensors, analog to digital converters and LCD devices. Some of these specialized libraries including the .NET IoT libraries, .NET Nano framework, Mido and more. And now we will see a quick recap of the topics that we saw till now. Summary. Now that you have made it until the end, let me summarize in a couple of minutes the main takeaways of what is .NET 6. First and most important of all, .NET completes the unification process that Microsoft started a few years ago. Now you can create cross-platform applications with ease sharing code and being able to target multiple platforms using the same language and libraries that you know and love. When you hear the word unification, these are the items that unify the platform. You get a uniform runtime and library implementation as well as common APIs. You get a symmetric model for targeting operating systems for example Android and Windows. It includes support for all the relevant operating system and environments plus tools that enable building all application types. Also, you get opt-in targeting of additional experiences, enabling a significant limit to the time and size it takes to use .NET on your computer. And check this out. The new functionality is available to all .NET developers at the same time. In a nutshell, for every application build, it is always .NET. However, here is a disclaimer. There is one thing that it is quite important and you need to take into account. 
just because your .NET 6 code compiles and runs on the platform that you use for development, it doesn't mean it will run on every other machine. Works on my machine is not accepted. If you call an API that is not supported in a particular platform, you will get a platform not supported exception. Don't worry, though it is not trial and error to determine which API run where. API have attribute to let us know which APIs are available in your target platform. There is the support OS platform attribute to let you know that you can't target a specific platform or on the other hand, there is an unsupported OS platform attribute to let you know that it is not supported in a specific platform. And finally, if an API has no attribute, then this is the good news as it is available on all platform, which takes me to the next point that it is little bit more philosophical in nature. Writing once and running anywhere is not magic. The fact that you can write a piece of code using all supported APIs and that it can be executed in a phone or in a desktop computer does not mean that .NET will convert and adapt your code so that it will run flawlessly on any device. Think of an application that runs on a phone versus one that runs in a computer. That is, when you create a user interface, you need to think and design your application. Taking into account the device that you are targeting, a mobile application shown in a small screen on the phone is not the same as the desktop application. You have much more real estate on your screen or when you create a web application that can run in different devices on varying resolution where you have less control of the target environment. And aside from the user interface, the backend code where you perform calculation, store and work with data and perform other backend tasks that will mostly likely run as long as you use support functionality from the base class library, the BCL and other libraries that you reference. If you do all this well, then you are on your way to create great application including web apps, web APIs, microservices, serverless functions in the cloud cloud native application, mobile application, desktop applications, games, internet of things, machine learning, console apps and windows service and you can target these applications for multiple platform including windows, mac os, linux, android, ios, tvos and watchos. And finally the current supported processor architectures include x64, x86, arm32 and arm64. Remember that .NET is open source, which means that you can contribute anytime, debug and even review the code whenever you please. Going beyond, even if .NET is open source, the .NET binary distributions for .NET are built and tested on Microsoft maintained servers in Azure and follow Microsoft engineering and security bread. It's not like you have to build .NET on your own. Regarding support. .NET is supported by Microsoft on Windows, Mac OS and Linux. It is updated regularly for security and quality purpose. In summary, .NET allows you to create cross-platform applications with great performance and scalability with, with plenty of new features like Hot Reload which enables you to skip rebuilding and restarting your application to view a new change while your app is running and with a single base class library all across the board. What are you waiting for? Go and create amazing .NET application and with this I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please do share, like and subscribe to my channel for more such videos. Thank you and see you in the next video.